Hey, uh, thank you so much for joining us and uh, welcome to JP. Uh, I'm delighted to be here with Michael Bulber, the receiver, as well as Secretary Pat Moulton. And I want to welcome the employees here who just uh, on a meeting with us together. Uh, listen, we're here to answer questions of the press. I want to introduce Michael Goldberg, let him tell you a little bit about what's going on here at Jay. I just want to say it's an honor to be here. We have to remember that with all the difficulty that everybody's going through with this EP5 project, uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of hardworking Vermonters, some of whom are in a room here with us today, who've helped to create a great resort here at JP. It's a strong business. It will continue to be a thriving business. Hugh Burke also, as you know, is almost completed. Literally, we've got the you know, oil and the fry -elators. It's ready to go. And our goal is to get that open and up and running as quickly as possible. As Michael Goldberg will outline, this particular receivership is different than many that he's probably dealt with and most that we've all watched for one simple reason. First of all, we have real viable businesses here. And secondly, and most importantly, the people who invested the money to help build these resorts did so not just because they wanted a return on their dollar, but most importantly, they wanted the jobs to be created so that they would be able to get immigration status in the United States, which is what they were after in the first place. So there's a different challenge here than you would might find in other similar situations. The goal here is to do everything that we can to protect the jobs of Vermonters, to protect and have thrive the businesses that have created economic opportunity here in the Northeast Kingdom, and to meet the investors' goals of having the jobs created so that their status, immigration status, will not be jeopardized. So in a sense, for a change, the investors aren't simply saying, liquidate it and get me the most money you can. What they're saying is, please do this in a way that preserves the jobs, which is exactly what I'm interested in as governor and what the employees here are so interested in because they want to keep their jobs too. So uh, I'm delighted to be here. I want to say to the employees, thank you for helping to build this. I'm convinced that going forward, JP and Burke Mountain have a bright employment future for Vermont, and that those of you that wish will be a part of that future going forward. And I'll do everything that I can as governor to work together with the federal government, with obviously Michael Bober and the receiver, with everybody involved to have the best possible outcome to what is a very difficult situation. I'll turn it over now to Michael Goldberg. I want to say uh, he's, uh, he's a quick learner. I'm impressed by what he's picked up in the last uh, 10 or 11 days, and uh, I think we're lucky to have him. So Michael, take it away. Thank you. And to take it easy on him, it's his first press conference. <laughs> yeah, I'm a lawyer. I'm not used to uh, doing press conferences, uh, but I am used to uh, dealing with receiverships. And as the governor said, this receivership is not like the normal receivership. I've been involved in hundreds of receiverships and have run over 25 of them. Um, as you can see, you're sitting in chairs that were bought. The buildings are here. Um, you have cars that say JP on them. You have the various lifts that operate. Um, in a typical receivership like this, a lot of times I will come in and there'll be nothing. Um, and we have to start scrambling to find out where the money went. Well, it's pretty obvious where much of the money went here, because you have the buildings, you have an operating hotel that is operating profitably. Um, overall, it makes money. Um, and I think the best thing you can do is speak to the employees. When I first got here, um, I suggested that we give the employees a message to say, if the media comes to you, you should uh, basically just have a script of what to say or say, I can't speak to you. And I said, no, let the employees speak directly to the media. And if you want, these employees have not been scripted at all. Go speak to them. They will tell you there is very little difference between what they were doing two or three weeks ago and what they're doing today. Um, it's business as usual. 
Um, it's actually better than usual because the management company, um, Resort Hotels, is going through and making the operation more efficient, and we expect that the hotel will thrive. The only thing we're praying for is snow in the winter right now, and uh, really that's what we need. We need a good snow season. Um, but otherwise, uh, this is a great asset. The Burke, uh, which I went over there, it, it will be changed to the Burke uh, name, and the queue will be dropped very shortly. Um, I gave a tour to a hotel operating company, an owner that wants to uh, possibly purchase that hotel. I expect to have a lot of interest in that. But regardless of that, that hotel will be open in the fall for the season. So it's business as usual at the J, and, and the Q-Burk uh, will open and, uh, and be a thriving hotel. It's a beautiful asset. Um, we can do a tour for the press in the next week if you want. Um, as the governor had said, there's, it's ready to open. There's grease in the fry cookers. There's flour in the bins. The, um, everything's brand new, and it's, it's beautiful. And, and, and it'll get open. Thrive. Um, the biggest issue is snow. That's all we need. Um, Great. So right. so, we have to take questions if you have them. Uh, can you guarantee 100 percent? Because there, there was comments in the press, as you know, that you know might close, including JP. Can you guarantee 100 percent will be open through next ski season? I can never guarantee anything 100 percent, but I can guarantee it 99.999 percent. Um, I don't know what happens in the world, uh, but it won't be anything operational that would shut the JP down. Um, that I can guarantee you. We have enough money to fund the operations, to pay the employees. Um, again, this is a profitable hotel. It makes a profit. If you think about it, the timing could not have been worse for the receivership. The last day of ski season was the week of the receivership going into the off season. Um, typically, you would accumulate cash and have that to fund the off season. I've gone out, I have the necessary cash now to fund us in the slow time in the off season. This hotel makes a ton of money during season and that cash will also be there next year and we expect that it will continue to be profitable. But overall the hotel is profitable and, and the operations are profitable and uh, we have great employees, we have uh, very um, great infrastructure here. Um, walk around, look at the hotel, go up to the floors and see the rooms. It's a very, very well-built hotel that employs a lot of people. It's important to this region. We have about five to 600 employees in the off season, and we will go up to about 12 to 1,300 employees in season. So this is an important part of this area, and it will stay and remain operational. And again, our biggest concern is snow. That's all we want. Mr. Goldberg, you, you painted a very dire financial picture to the court, and now it seems to be in contrast to what you told um, the Fed. So can you tell us what the disconnect is? Sure. We, we discussed this the other day. Sorry. Um, the, the, the difference is this, and just so you everybody understands the court proceeding. In that court proceeding, Mr. Kiros was requesting a bunch of money. I have certain frozen funds that I have to operate the hotel. He was requesting a lot of money. You were in court. You heard um, hundreds of thousands of dollars a month for him, living expenses, and his lawyers. And we were basically saying to the judge, we need all the money we have available to operate the hotel and keep it open. And then, if you would give it to him, that may be a cash crunch here. Um, but additionally, in the last few days, we've located additional funds that we have available for us, regardless of what the court does. So we, we can say much more confidentially now, confidently now, that the that the JP can remain open. Where did those funds come from? There was funds frozen in Canada that we have to get down here, and we'll, we'll have those transferred down here. Uh, we have 4.7 million of immediately available funds that I, I have authorized to be put immediately into the operating accounts to fund the, the, the near future in the off season. We additionally have funds that you may have heard in the court proceeding that a bank had frozen. Um, they've frozen at least $3 million more than what they claim they are owed. So we'll get $3 million from that uh, transferred over to the operating accounts. And if need be, we'll request, we have other funds frozen. If need be, we'll request the court to take a loan from those funds to fund the operations, and I don't think that'll be a problem. But I don't even think we'll ever get there. I think we'll have the sufficient cash liquidity to operate the hotel anyway. What was the total amount from Canada? It was about 1.3 million in Canada. So at this point, do you have the funds necessary to make it through to October, November? Do you need to secure any additional loans? 
Um, I don't need to secure any additional funds at this point in time. We have enough we have budgets and we have enough funds. Now, again, as the governor stated, this is a very different receivership. Um, as was stated, most of these receiverships, the investors are demanding their money back immediately. That's not the case here. In fact, over the last week, I've been contacted by several investor groups for different of the projects, different projects, the Cuba, the state side, who wanted to actually infuse additional funds into the equity, into the projects to finish and complete them so the jobs can be created, so they can get their EB-5 visas. They're more concerned in many respects with getting their EB-5 status than getting their money back. And that's not, that's not universal, but it's a large portion of the EB-5 investors are saying, can percentage of them are saying, can we help? Because what we really want is the jobs to remain. And is there cash for a, a tram fix? Yes, um, we have located the cash for the tram fix. Uh, we're not even sure we have to fix the tram, just to be clear. Um, we're told we do, but the company that tells us we have to fix it is also the one that will get the contract. So we are going to bring in an independent engineer to tell us whether or not it truly has to be fixed. Um, life safety issues are the fundamental, most important thing we will keep. We will focus on, and if it has to be fixed, we will fix it. We will bring in some other engineers to also look at it um, and tell us whether it has to be fixed. How much money do you need to finish stateside in Q-Burk, and how much money have investors said, said we'll put up? <clears throat> to finish Q-Burk, I need no money to finish it. It's finished. You can go. It can, it can open this week. Right, but there were people who invested in the aquatic center and tennis courts and all that. What right, at, that, that? at this point in time, we're not going to start construction on the aquatic center and everything, but to open the Kuberg property, I need about $5,000, because all I need is housekeeping for about a week to go through, and, and I, I really, really think you should go take a look at how, how complete it really is. The alarm clocks are set to the right time in the rooms. Um, the, there's grease in the fry cooker. The stores are all stocked with equipment. The ski operations have the rental operations. There's skis, there's poles, there's snowboards, their helmets are ready to be rented. That that place can be opened immediately. Um, there's no no issue with that. Let, let me just add something else uh, that Michael and I should mention. Uh, with all the press of, uh, on this in the last uh, 10 or 12 days, it's obvious that the public kind of wonders, you know, is there a business here? really important to know, not only is JP open and meeting, looking forward to the weddings and all the other things that are coming up and gonna have as great an experience as you ever would have had, assuming that it's not raining. Uh, JP's hiring, JP needs employees now. They've got a big Porsche event coming up in June. Uh, so not only is this place alive and well, but looking for staff. If you want a job, come and apply. That's absolutely correct. We need uh, help, uh, we have a huge, Porsche event coming up in uh, June 24th, I believe, uh, mid-June, mid to late June, and uh, every room is booked, um, and it's, it's it's a very profitable event for this hotel. It will go forward, and we need we need employees. For this. Mr. Goldberg, did any employees lose their job after this went into the receivership? Um, I am not 100% sure of the answer to that. I, am, I, I think certain employees did, but it would be employees where they were excess employees. No employees needed to operate the hotel efficiently or properly have lost their job. Um, if somebody did lose their job, it was because we didn't need, and I'm just making it five valet parkers when we could do three valet parkers. Uh, nobody needed to operate this properly to provide the services to the guests of the hotel um, have lost their job. Governor Mr. Goldberg, I would like to switch to Newport for a minute, and maybe the governor may be able to answer this a little bit better. I live in Newport where there's a big hole on Main Street where the space blocks were. Is that going to go on the receivership and what can the state do to help redevelop that so, so it doesn't yep. stay like it is for? So as you know, both uh, Michael Goldberg and myself have met with the mayor, uh, with the folks that are working so hard to do the very best we can for Newport. Uh, on a very short term basis, one of their concerns is, you know, you've got this fence, can they deal with it? Both right. Michael as a receiver and I and state folks have said, you know, go do what you want with the fence, let's make it look better. Uh, there is no question that uh, Newport is facing the biggest tragedy of this development because it should be clear to anybody that ANC buyout is never going to happen. Uh, we will take the Bogner property 
and work with Michael and the receiver to try and find a use for that property as quickly as possible. There's some interest in it. Uh, both Secretary Moulton, myself, Michael Goldberg, and others have received inquiries from people who are interested in doing something with the whole in downtown Newport. Michael and we want to work together to expedite that as quickly as we can find a, a, a real project that would be a benefit to the city. So, you know, bottom line is we're all going to work together to make the best of that situation. Uh, the Northeast Kingdom folks are resilient, they're innovative, and we'll all work together to do the best that we can. But there's no question that because those weren't ongoing operating businesses like JP and about to be Berg, uh, the biggest challenges are the downtown hole in the ground and the former uh, ANC property. And if I could add also, Governor, <clears throat> one of the things about the hole in the ground is it is a clean slate. The asbestos has been abated, the lead has been abated, what was a, apparently a fire hazard has been torn down. So it's a site ready to go for anyone interested in making a, an investment in downtown Newport. And as the governor said, we'll work with those developers and we do have some interest uh, from some out of state and, and even Canadian companies who may be interested in locating facilities here in the Bogner building presents a great opportunity that now we can start to market. Name, who I'm wondering, what, what's the future of EV5 projects in Vermont? Will Vermont continue to take on EV5 projects or is this left a bad taste in Vermont's proverbial mouth? Well, there's no question this has left a bad taste in Vermont's borough mouth, uh, and you'd have to have no taste buds not to have a bad taste. Having said that, uh, the Vermont Regional Center continues to have very positive projects that we're going to continue to move forward with. And let's not forget, we had good projects in the past, Sugarbush, uh, Country Home, uh, and others that have not only helped us grow jobs and economic opportunity, but have returned returned to investors and gotten them their EV5 cards. So, uh, you know, you all, we all know that uh, this is a tough day for Vermont's EV5 program, but we're going to be working together uh, with the projects that are not run by people who are allegedly fraudulent uh, to make make it work in the future because it's a job, it's a job for you. And if I could add, I mean, we are actively continuing to market the EV-5 projects that we have, we have four other projects, Mount Snow, Trap uh, Brewing Company, Stow Aviation, and South Face Village in Ludlow. Those projects are ongoing. We have the systems in place now to do the necessary compliance and review so investors will have comfort that this type of fraud would, it would not happen again. And we are doing the necessary quarterly compliance so we're in a pretty good place as it relates to EV-5. What are some of the things that you're doing to make sure that this isn't happening in other places or won't happen in the future? Well, first, as you know, we have the partnership between our agency of Commerce and Community Development and the Department of Financial Regulation. We're the only regional center in the country that has a securities regulator as a partner in our regional center. So all these projects are going through quarterly compliance reviews. They're submitting information to the department as needed to conduct those reviews. And there have been absolutely no red flags that have shown up on any of these other projects. So we're getting that word out. We're continuing that compliance review. Any new projects would go through the entire review with both our agency and the Department of Financial Regulation as they were getting launched. Applications would be reviewed by DFR, private placement memoranda, so we're confident that this would never happen again. And we're making sure our current projects are in full compliance, and they are. Will there be a chapter 11 filing? Please explain the status of the stateside projects, especially the condos and townhouses that are not built, and what's going to happen with them? The They're state, not completed. The cottages that are not completed is about 35 in various stages of completion. Um, I'm meeting with a group of the investors who are EB-5 investors for that who would express an interest in possibly putting up the funds to complete that project. So it's premature to tell you what exactly will happen. My gut feeling is that will eventually move forward and be completed. Um, only 35? No, 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 no. There's 85, I think, believe, that are called for, or 84 called for out of the project. Uh, my gut feeling is, again, they, they want their EB-5 status, they want it completed, and uh, I think uh, they will step up to the plate. We need approximately to complete the whole project, including the rec center and the um, medical center, I think approximately 20 million. 
give or take. And I know I'm tip talking millions, give or take. That's and can you explain the process under which you have the authority to sell properties, to raise money through investors, to change the queue on QBird? Explain how that works sure. while the lawsuit is, uh, these people still own the property, I think, in some sense or other. Sure. Well, right now they've been dispossessed of the property, and I put in, okay. I put in possession of the property to run it by a federal district court in Miami, Florida, um, which is very common in these cases where they appoint a receiver to take over. So I have full authority as if I was them doing everything. Okay. And but my authority is limited by the court's permission. Um, I don't need the court's permission to change the name of the hotel from the q to the Burke. So but that if I could notice, happen today? It's going to happen within the next week. Okay. okay. Now, you won't see, there's so many queues on that property. <laughs> Every bed has a queue on it and everything. That'll probably be phased out over time. But in the marketing materials and the main signage, you'll see that changed. The queue will be dropped from that. Um, but let me just be very clear. The ultimate authority in this case on selling assets is, is the court, is the judge. Okay. I can recommend things to the court, and I do that via by what's called a motion. Um, and I file that with the court. The court holds a hearing. Investors, other interested parties can come in and say, I disagree with the receiver. Maybe it should go this way. Um, but what I try to do before I file that motion is build consensus so that I, ha I, I have the meetings with the investors that are interested in what I'm doing or with the specific creditor in that so that I build consensus so that I, when I go to the court, it's, Your Honor, we request authority to sell, our creditors support it, and please grant us authority. So that's basically the process. Okay. So, what is Vermont's Congressional get the delegation in giving you any help in this, or where, where is the Senator Lady in? Yes, uh, the congressional delegation has, has always been very responsive. We're obviously working with them to do everything we can to ensure that we're protecting the interests of the investors who are trying to get their hold on to their green cards and get their green cards granted. So the answers uh, they've been great. Well, we need an act of Congress for the AMC buyer investors who need green cards, I and mean, they're not going to have projects on the bills. What happens to that? It's it's too early to tell. Um, Senator Leahy's office has reached out to me. Uh, hopefully I'll be uh, meeting with him shortly. And uh, we certainly have the interest, and I think he's aligned in that, in protecting uh, investors and the EB-5 program. And uh, here's one simple uh, understanding. A lot of the ANC money may have been diverted into projects such as this, where extra jobs were created. If it's possible for us to take advantage of the extra jobs created here at the q and we can use them to benefit the ANC investors, we're gonna try to do that. Um, we're certainly going to try to work um, to benefit that. If it requires us asking for something to be rewritten into the law, we will ask. And we will, we will ask pretty hardly um, to, to forcefully, I guess is the correct word, to try to make that happen. Um, my goal is to not only maximize the assets here, um, value the assets, but to protect those investors. And again, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them is primary concern is their EB-5 status, and we'll do what we have to do. Um, we're not afraid to ask, so we'll do what we have to do to try to protect them. Chapter 11? Chapter 11 is not, not on the table. We don't need a Chapter 11. Um, the same uh, benefits of Chapter 11 can be done through the receivership process in the district court without creating a feeding, fre feeding frenzy of lawyers and people are just gonna suck the value out of here. We can, we can achieve the goals in a much more efficient way um, without instituting a Chapter 11, and I don't think we need it. Can you explain the order by which uh, you will be repaying all the parties in this and the time frame for that? It's too early for any of those questions. I'm sorry, I'm only in here about 11 days, 12 days, and I just, that right now my primary focus is securing the assets, identifying bank accounts, cash. It's easy to identify a building. It's, it's harder to locate bank accounts and, and more intangible type of assets. So right now we focus on that, and then we focus on, once we have it all secured, the next step of claims processes and distributions. Even if you can't reveal a timeline, hold on one second, even if you can't reveal a timeline, can you just talk generally how these things work and in situations like this, um, the order? Yeah, I'll talk generally. Um, 
but again, this is not the normal receivership, and that's very important to focus on. I've never had a receivership um, where the investor victims have called me up and said, we want to put more money in to make sure it gets completed. I've never seen that before. So I, I don't know if the normal receivership is going to be a good indication of what this receivership will be. Uh, that being said, um, typically you have secured creditors ahead of unsecured creditors ahead of equity. That's very general and it may not apply in this receivership, so I don't really know what there is to report on that. It's just too premature at this time to know what the um, ultimate outcome as far as the plan of distribution will be. What about the lien holders? Uh, the lien hold holders, um, to the extent they have valid liens, and the extent that the amount of money they claim is valid, will be taken care of out of the proceeds of the properties. Prior to the investors? Uh, at this point in time, it's too early to tell, but typically, typically in a typical case, yes. So if I'm a local company in the Northeast Kingdom, um, do I have any hope of getting, and I'm owed some money uh, for work done, do I have any hope of getting that money anytime soon or? Well, of course, number one, um, these assets are not gonna be sitting around. They'll be sitting here, but they'll, we're gonna eventually sell them and accumulate cash and use that cash to pay them off. Whether that's, the, the Burke will probably be sold first is my guess. Um, and that may be within the next five months, six months to a year. Um, and out of those proceeds, we'll utilize those proceeds to satisfy the claims of creditors in accordance with what the court orders us to do. Is there any exposure so, so, to investors for the cheaper and the amenities at I, I It's too early to tell. I haven't even analyzed that. That's way down the line. Mr. Bullshaw, so uh, uh, my name is Philippe Vieira. I'm going to thank the employees. We have a lot more uh, questions here. No, talk about uh, here to, to well, Mike on this. Can, can you give us a few more minutes here? No, I mean, just, just a second, please. Uh, Mr. Sorry, Kruger, I'm taking, Philippe Vieira, I'm one of the investors. We're taking questions oh, sorry. from the press. It's a press conference. Go ahead, Paul. Oh, okay. I'd like to hear this gentleman's question. Well, we're here to answer press questions. We'll talk to investors later. What's Why did the state advance by a partial approval in the negative problems? Uh, I'd be happy to talk to you about that, but what you should know is we get ANC when we pack a program. Yeah, I mean, as you know, the uh, there were approval to begin marketing ANC Bio, but any new funds would be put into escrow and not be released, and so that is exactly how that came down, and DFR has controlled the release of funds from that ANC Bio uh, project, and they were approved under a new PPM and asked that all investors re-sign and reaffirm their commitment to that project with that new PPM. And so we feel pretty comfortable that we've got those new investor monies protected. They are in escrow as we speak. So are they going to be sent back first? Are they going to be set, treated separately from the rest of the That's money? really a judge's right question. Yeah. That, that's up to the judge. Yeah. That's up to the judge. What is the reason this is a different kind of receivership, but with your experience in other receiverships, what kind of stain is left on a property's reputation? Uh, in, a, in a case like Jay, you know, why would a skier from, from New York City come to Jay if there's a sense that something sketchy happened here? Might they just go to Stowe instead? No, I mean, that, that's an easy question because they're not gonna notice anything different. They're gonna see snow on the mountain, and I think it really be generally the ski conditions that'll govern that decision. The, uh, the employees will be working, doing the same job that they did. The hotel is gonna be maintained the same way as before. I mean, I don't, there are plenty of hotels that went through bankruptcy. I don't go through and say, I'm not gonna stay at this Ritz-Carlton or this Marriott or this Starwood because it went through a bankruptcy. I, I go there because they're providing services and it's the right location. So I expect that that won't even go into anybody's decision-making process. Excuse me. Felipe's question is, what are you hearing from USCIS? I have not spoken to USCIS at this point. Well, I have, what, what and they are clearly ready and will continue to process petitions for uh, immigration status. And uh, so we've encouraged, and as the website information has encouraged investors to continue to pursue their petitions through USCIS. And admittedly, their approval process is ridiculously slow, but they are going to continue to adjudicate these petitions for investors. And what about folks whose projects aren't finished? What about like those uh, those condos, that type of thing? Again, it's too early because we may wind up finishing. I don't know right now. I'm going to be meeting with the investors. Um, my, you know, representation of the investors is my primary concern. 
I will do anything I can to better them. I will fly to Washington if I have to. Will you hear their questions? Of course. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I will always. I, 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 I've spoken with Felipe. And we yeah, communicated. We, spoke, we spoke yesterday. I, just so you know, I've spoken with hundreds of investors already. Um, everybody has my cell phone. Right. Just yeah. want to make I mean, clear. We're, 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 we're happy to talk all day. Yeah, yeah. Just, 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 just not going to do it in a press conference. Yeah. Okay. Other Thanks, everyone. Governor, Governor, I have another question. Yeah, Governor, yeah. Governor, Governor, I have another question. Do you have another minute to take another question? I'm wondering about oh. my last one, Paul. We're going to give it to you because you're the loudest mouth. Go ahead. <laughs> Happy to be in. I'm wondering if you're worried about the investors suing the state, given all of the representations that you made over the years about the health of these projects and the robustness of the state oversight process. I have no way of speculating what lawsuits might happen. I'm sure that every lawyer uh, will try their very best to get a piece of the tragedy here. What I can tell you is uh, I, like past governors, have been proud to promote Vermont's EB5 Regional Center. And whenever I have done a presentation in, in front of a group of investors, I've always started by saying, I want to be very clear. I cannot endorse any particular projects. I'm not here to endorse the projects that are being outlined here today. I'm here to tell you about Vermont's EV5 Regional Center. And that's been my role. And uh, you know, you can always hire a lawyer to sue anybody, but I can't leave and get very far. You said the state audited the projects, didn't you, in a video? Excuse me? You said the state audited the projects. I did this speak in one video and used the word audit. It's been well reported in the press that I asked them Correct that word. It was in a free flow of, of, of response, and I used a wrong word. At the time, it was reported that I used the wrong word. We had them take it down. They did remove the word. I'm not perfect. Nobody here in this world is perfect, I don't think. But I did use one wrong word when speaking, had it corrected, and had it removed. Great. Thanks, everyone.